I don't know if I should be admitting this, but if I were invited as a guest into your home and I went to go use the guest bathroom, if there was a medicine cabinet, I would open the medicine cabinet and I would look inside. Just, uh, hmm. I see you have some icy hot neosporin band-aids. What what is this? Hemor hemorrhoid cream. Hemorrhoids. Mm, now I know a little bit more about you. Rest assured, I'm not gonna, you know, five finger discount your hemorrhoid cream because you need it. But I have to say that if there was a medicine cabinet and I can open it, I would open it and you'll never know. If given the chance, if like we were in some big family get together, which I, I used to do in big family get togethers, if left unattended, I would pop open your um, your pantry and I would take a look inside. If you're in an Asian household, what kind of what kind of rice do you have? Like, how do you store your rice? I want to see what kind of canned goods you have. Just want to look at your canned goods. Sometimes I would look at your canned goods or your non perishables and I would just check the expiration date and that would inform you your peaches have been expired for five years or your tomato sauce have been expired and you do not want to use expired tomato sauce because it eats right through the can. So what I'm saying here is I'm nosy and then you probably should just never invite me into your home because I will look inside your medicine cabinet if it is there and unlocked. Something about these nooks and crannies inside people's homes that have formerly up until now been behind closed doors has always sparked some kind of voyeuristic curiosity in me. The topic of today's video kind of scratches that voyeuristic itch of looking inside a complete stranger's pantry or fridge or closet or bathroom invites you to to compare what they have versus what you have and how they tidy up and organize what's behind their cabinets compared to how you do it you know it's kind of shows you how to do it it's like a how-to but at the same time you don't have that big a fridge so maybe it's a it's a flex it's an organizational flex or a food flex because you don't have that much food on hand so on its surface level, restocking and organizational content seems pretty brainless. You know, usually there's no talking. Usually there's an ASMR rhythm to it. But if you dive deeper, it starts to unravel layers of elitism, food flexing, and also taps into your basic human instincts of, of judging people, judging people and then judging yourself. So that's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Teresa and this is Restocking One's Pantry. We're going to judge those that restock their pantry, you know, just lightly judge. And then we're going to judge those who judge those that restock their pantry. And then because we need to keep the circle of judgment going, we're going to judge ourselves. This video essay in its simplest essence is about people who have a lot of plastic containers, acrylic clear plastic containers that are aesthetic, underlying aesthetic, and they've been going that extra mile to decant their orange juice into a prettier bottle, decant their big two liter jug of milk into a smaller bottle. Look at these big jugs. Ugh. Gotta put it in a uniformed bottle. Taking their cold cuts out of their original package and putting their cold cuts into clear plastic containers and then filming yourself doing it. For the most part, whenever I come across any of these restocking videos, I'll be like, hmm. I don't really feel any kind of ASMR tingle when they are the ASMR type. And the ASMR type, by the way, the influencer has had their nails done. They tap on it, you know, and the sound is turned up so that you hear every noise and it's soothing for, well, oh, it's soothing for some people. And to be honest, I feel nothing. And when I see them, I'm neither angry or joyful. I just feel neutral. So I come to you doing this topic as kind of a neutral observer. It doesn't anger me. I don't really see anything wrong with it. At the same time, watching a bunch of video essays about the critiques of why this is bad, I, I could see that point too. So take it with a grain of salt. If you are doing well in life and you happen to have a giant kitchen, like a dream kitchen with a gigantic kitchen island and a big stainless steel sub-zero fridge with like a TV on the fridge, Maybe you have two fridges and you want to make the inside aesthetic. You want clear plastic containers so you could clearly see your food. You want to restock your pantry like you're running some kind of convenience store. Then more power to you. 
I don't care. Frankly, I don't really care what anybody does with their homes. But then at the same time, watching a bunch of video essays about this topic, about how it promotes um, overconsumption. Like, do you need all those clear plastic containers? What is the purpose of pouring your milk into a prettier container and then that container not being enough to fill all your milk? So then what happens with the extra milk? Does it go to waste? Does it go in your second fridge? Are these aesthetic containers for your milk and your orange juice and your condiments, are they sterilized? What then happens to a box of takeout food items in a weird shape? If these containers are labeled with a specific type of produce like apples, oranges, what if you have cherries and there's no room for the cherries? You know, there's all these questions involved and I'm willing to bet that they figured it out and there's no food waste and there could be an extra fridge for the leftovers, you know, for the unesthetic food container. So we're talking about two fridges here. So there's a lot of questions about the logistics of how this all works. Is it sanitary? Obviously, it's excessive. Does one need to have an entire freezer dedicated to flavored ice? One of the biggest critiques that I see lobbed at these ladies is the fact that they're making money off of this. They have affiliate links. They have sponsorships. They're making money off their platform. And it's basically like their videos are a giant commercial. So essentially, it's like we're bring back the Tupperware party. In the 50s, a housewife, in order to make some side income, she would have these Tupperware parties, invite all her friends over and show them how she uh, keeps house, how she organizes with her Tupperware. I feel that has not really gone away. It's just transformed. That whole vibe has evolved into a Tupperware online party where these organizational influencers have their cute Tupperware. They show you how they organize and how to use it, but their content is just a giant ad to get you to click onto their Amazon storefront and their affiliate links. And they make a few dollars off the sale of your purchase of their container. So is it the fact that she She's making money off showing you containers and how she organizes her her kitchen. Is that what is bothering everybody? The fact that she is making money off this type of content. I don't really have issues of another woman getting her bag. You know what I'm saying? Like if another woman has found a way to make money online and support her family or herself, then more power to her. Are they taking advantage of their viewers? I don't really think so because I feel like by now everybody knows that influencers have affiliate links and sponsor codes and everything. I don't fault anybody paying their bills because even if they have like a million subscribers on TikTok, that's paying you peanuts. And if you are relying on Instagram creator fund money, if they still have it for reels or something, that's also paying you peanuts. I follow this food account, one of those like what to eat in your local area account. And this account is pretty popular. I would say like a million subscribers, probably like a million views per video. She's very transparent about what she makes. For a video with the million views on Instagram, she makes about $46. You know, I read this article that like you would think that influencers are making a lot of money and a lot of them sometimes are, but a lot of them are making less than a minimum wage job. I used to have a blog in the 2010s and had affiliate links and stuff. It is not a lot. But then again, I was not that great of an influencer, so they could be making making like 30 cents off the sale of one Tupperware. Of course, if you are a successful enough influencer and you have a large enough following that actually wants to buy what you're peddling, it could add up and good on her. I'm not really angry about it promotes overconsumption to other people because what are the chances that you see somebody with about 50 aesthetic containers and you're like, I need every single one of these and then you just do this bulk buy, 50 containers all in one go. I'm assuming that people People who are influenced into buying what they're selling are buying one, two, two containers, whatever you need. These women have enormous fridges. The containers fit their fridges. It's not like the regular Jane with her basic rental fridge is going to buy all those containers. Even if you decide that you don't want to organize your pantry anymore, you could probably repurpose the containers for other things. You could probably put your makeup in these containers or you could use them as a planter or something. I feel like people are not going to go hog wild and buy 
the amount of containers that this influencer is peddling you. Frankly, I feel like the overconsumption is kind of um, exaggerated, you know? Oh no, what if their followers are so dumb that they're just going to buy a hundred containers and put themselves into debt in order to organize their kitchen? I don't think they're going to buy like all 50 products, all 50 extra products that you need to fill your travel bag. Some people may, but I feel like for the majority of us, we either are not influenced at all, and that's me, or we are influenced to buy one thing. In all my years of consuming online content, I was probably influenced to buy like five things. Things I get influenced to buy are like less than 10 bucks. You know, all my years of watching YouTube videos. When did I ever buy a VP? So the whole overconsumption argument, I feel is a little overblown because yes, these ladies have in their possession an inordinate amount of plastic containers that they are then trying to convince you through aesthetics and ASMR to buy. Overall, if you in your household are influenced to buy one plastic container or two or three, I feel like it's not going to be the ends of the world. Are you damaging the environment that much? Are you going to buy these containers and then in a year you decide that you don't want to organize anymore and you're just going to throw these containers away in a landfill? I feel like you would probably just repurpose it for something else. Or maybe you'll just donate it and then you just see these plastic containers that probably cost $5 on Amazon sold for like $10 at Goodwill. So unless you've been heavily influenced and then we would like to hear your story in the comments down below. Let me know know if you have ever been influenced watching these organizational videos to buy some plastic containers. Tell us your story. I feel like I'm Oprah. Anybody out there, I want to know, have you been influenced to buy home organizational items in bulk that you then regret? Or are you using them? Like what's going on here? Tell us the state of your kitchen and your pantry. So other than the sterilization of liquids, of pouring milk into an unsterilized yet aesthetic bottle when you don't need to and the whole unnecessariness of it all i don't really have an issue with it. it didn't really influence me but then again maybe i'm an outlier and i'm hard-headed hard to convince the algorithm wants something that either enrages people or gets them gets their attention unfortunately that favors something that is excessive like visually excessive and that's why you have some people having a entire freezer drawer dedicated to flavored ice to flavored ice cubes or an entire refrigerator drawer or dedicated to a salad bar. We're all wondering, why are all the vegetables all pre-cut up? Like, is somebody going to eat all these vegetables? Why do you have like an entire produce section of vegetables in your fridge? And, you know, we don't really know what's going on. Somebody could have a giant family, could have eight kids. With eight kids, all this food is going to be gone just like that. Or they don't really care what happens to these vegetables. These vegetables could rot, but it's an investment for views. Ultimately, I hope people who watch restocking videos organizational videos don't feel bad for you know not living up to the tidiness the level the excessive level of organization that is portrayed online because ultimately the extremes you know extreme organization or extreme disorganization extreme minimalism having no furniture a furniture free life versus extreme hoarding like the worst level of hoarding you could possibly see those are the types of content that gets attention that is beloved by the algorithm and then people who are just kind of like middle of the road like I'm I feel like I'm just middle of the road in my home I'm not necessarily messy everything here is tidy but it's a little dusty. To be honest, I don't really like to dust. I probably dust like once a month. Once a month is probably generous. Once every two months. So in my pantry, everything more or less has its proper place. You know, I just place it in the pantry when, there, when there's room in the pantry. Like my pantry is very small and it's very deep. So it's hard for me to kind of see what's going on in the back of the pantry. I'm short, so there's like an entire shelf that's outside of my eye level. So I have to get a stool and I have to look inside the pantry. More or less it's tidy but a little grimy recently i have this uh balsamic vinegar and then some have dripped onto the the pantry leaving a ring of balsamic vinegar and i see that ring go hmm 
and I don't clean it up. In the same vein that two opposing ideas can be true at the same time, a person can be at once tidy and dusty. I think that most people are, are kind of like that. You could be very clean and tidy in one area of your life, but not clean and tidy in other areas of your life. I would have to admit that my fridge is kind of disgusting. My crisper drawer, like my vegetable crisper drawer, I don't ever clean it actually. If like some vegetables go bad, I'll throw away the bad vegetables, but sometimes they leave like little residues. I just put the fresh vegetables on top of the residue in the door where the condiments are, like the sauces, it's kind of grimy down at the bottom. But then at the same time, the grime is not getting in the, the sauce bottle, like in the soy sauce bottle or the ponzu sauce bottle or the sriracha bottle. So I'm like, Neh. And then every month or every three months or so, I get motivated to clean and then I vacuum up the place. Like I would just say that I probably vacuum once a month. You, you probably think from my description that I live in a sty and it's not true. I live in a semi sty. Really depends on your level of cleanliness because I, I never clean the the curtains. My apartment came with these um, vertical blinds, you know, those plastic vertical blinds. And I would have to say that in all the time I've been here, I took the hose of the vacuum and I and I, I slightly brushed them with the hose of the vacuum. And then it was very tiring. So then I stopped. I guess you can say the vertical blinds have never been cleaned. I don't even know how you clean them. Do you vacuum it? Do you get a wet cloth and dust it. I'm looking at them now. They seem clean from far away. There's like a, a fruit fly that kind of migrated into the, the freezer. I see it every day. I go, eh. You know, I think that it sounds bad that I have a frozen fruit fly in the freezer door, in like the, the corner of the freezer door. And I see it, but I don't I don't clean it. I feel like you're judging me hard right now. And um, you're you're in your right too. Why don't you just take a paper towel and then just clean up that fruit fly? And um, I don't know. At this point, I feel like it's home is the fridge. And here I am judging somebody for decanting their milk into an aesthetic bottle that may or may not be sanitized. And I have a, a frozen fruit fly in the, uh, in the freezer and I don't care. If I am a person that is too lazy to even clean out an insect that has been frozen <laughs> in my freezer, in my freezer door for months, years, has it been years? Like that fruit fly could have been here for like four years. It's part of the family now. So how do you really think I'm gonna maintain clear plastic containers? And I'm ventured to say maybe a lot of you are more like me than the very tidy clean fluencers. A lot of you are probably like, no, I'm not like you at all, Teresa. You are a you're a slob. You should be ashamed. And the funny thing is I don't I don't feel shame. Like the whole woman's shame in the domestic sphere, like if you don't keep a tidy house or a tidy kitchen or you have clutter or whatever, women take that onto themselves. They internalize it more than men. Is that something I should be worried about? Like I should feel shame for being kind of a, a slob as a as a woman? Is that something I should internalize? Cause I don't, I don't feel bad. And I know some people are gonna be like, you should feel bad for not feeling bad. I feel like that part of my brain has been snipped. This is how it feels like to be like a man, to be a full on man, like the dirty bachelor's pad. I don't think that guy, the bachelor and his dirty pad, I don't think he feels shame for it. And I don't feel any shame for my dirty kitchen. What are you thinking? Get rid of that frozen fruit fly, throw it in the garbage. It's not sanitary, but all the, the frozen food is packaged and it's not touching the fly. And when I take out the frozen food, the fly is like in the door, in the corner of the door. Everything is technically sanitary. Yeah, if I ever open up a restaurant, don't, don't go. Trust me, you don't wanna see how the sausage is made. Don't ever invite me to your home because I will look in your medicine cabinet if given the chance. So you better hide your, hide your hemorrhoid creams, hide your embarrassing ointments because I, I will find it and I will look at it. And I, I wouldn't necessarily judge you. I'll just have some, I'll just form some character assumptions about you. I don't really think that peddling containers online is necessarily a bad thing because in reality, I don't think a lot of people are gonna be influenced by containers unless 
you have. So let me know. Let me know. I want to know all about how you keep your pantry. I want to know about your level of cleanliness. So just maybe rate your level of cleanliness, whereas like zero is the worst level of hoarding that you can imagine versus 10, the restocking clean fluencers with your pristine kitchen. Like where do you rank yourself in terms of domestic cleanliness? You know, I think I'm a I'm a six. You may think that I'm like a three, but I I firmly believe I'm like a six, maybe a seven. I'm going to give myself a raise to seven. How many times do you clean your blinds or your drapes? How many times do you clean your refrigerator? If you clean your refrigerator at all, how many times does one need to clean one's toilet or shower? I would assume the shower is self-cleaning. So now that some of you may think I'm a complete slob, and some of you may think like she's normal-ish, it is now time for me to go. I'm having trouble speaking. Then they would re- Ugh, I'm so tired. That's a, I, 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 the two liter milk jug is too damn big. These big jugs, look at these, look at these big jugs. Ugh. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've enjoyed me, but you wouldn't necessarily invite me into your home, into your medicine cabinet, I understand. But if you've enjoyed me virtually, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you. I'll see you next time.